using a method known as beach scening. Cromwell-based Robbie Dick began his business, Central Wormworks, with an aim to provide a solution to what was a growing community waste issue. Robbie's workers are thousands of tiger worms, ideally suited to a role in waste management. They're well adapted for converting organic waste material to nutrient-rich soil conditioning worm castings. The worms themselves are also sold by the kilogram to various destinations. Well, we've got about 20 tonne of worms that eat 35 tonne of waste every 10 days. It reduces a lot of the waste that goes to the landfill. And that's a plus for everybody. A lot of the orchards used to send their waste there and um, New World, Queenstown and Fresh Choice up to a year ago used to send waste there and now it comes here. After um, feeding the raw product to the worms in a fortnight's time, the worms convert it to a soil conditioner that we get analysed um, by um, Hills Laboratories and Soil and Food Web just to, to prove it's not fairy dust and, and people want to know the MPK reading and, and things like this. We can show them the visual side, but um, they also want the scientific proof that it's going to be good for their farms and, and we're just too happy to run any trials they like. Working as a shepherd at the abattoirs and getting a wee bit sick of working for other people, had the option of being a worm farmer the abattoirs where I was a shepherd offered the porch grass, which they had been dumping. So I um, got three trailer loads weekly and, and um, fed it to the worms. And then it, um, we started to pick up fruit and truck wash material, any organic matter. The more variety you can feed them, the, the better quality castings. The worms come from New Plymouth, and it was a half a tonne of worms we bought at a cost of $47,000. But at the same token, they gave us the right to supply 192 kilos back to them weekly. So you grew them out for between eight months and a year, and then started harvesting at 192 kilos weekly. Monday and Tuesday is our biggest harvest day for worms. They go all around the country. They're packed out in multiples of 7 kg lots down to half a kg. They're sold to um, plumbers who, are, who install composting toilets, um, large um, recycling places that um, have a lot of compost and want to reduce the um, volume and increase the value of their product. Uh, they're packed out in smaller lots for Bunnings, um, the warehouse and places like that. And private orders, a lot go out through trade me orders. This is a kilo worms been weighed out and um, to curry them around New Zealand, uh, we weigh them then pack them in damp peat. So that goes over the top and keeps them moist and uh, that will last uh, four or five days. These are tiger worms. They seem to suit our conditions, so they adapt to the cold winters here and also the, um, the high temperatures in the summer, so anything from minus 7 or 8 to um, plus 30. For a kilo of worms, we asked $45. Bigger orders, we come down on that one, possibly pick up the freight charges or something like that. Every 30 days they double in number in, in warm conditions, so if they kept them um, moist and uh, plenty of food, uh, they'll, they'll soon um, number up. But they, they seem to have more brains than what we do because they work out how much area they've got, how much food they've got, and number off accordingly. They just don't keep multiplying just for the sake of it. We've got 15 rows at 60 metres long, and uh, once every 10 days, each row gets two tonne of waste per row. We're going through 1,500 tonne of waste annually, and it's increasing all the time as people plant more fruit trees and uh, creates more waste, of course, and new worlds are getting bigger, and we're, yeah, expanding the business. We bring in a lot of wintering shed waste from Southland which is an extremely good product. It's um, been um, harvested from the shed on a, um, a daily basis. It goes into a sump and then through a dewatering plant 
and then it's trucked up here in a dry, fibrous form. Um, no leachate involved at all, no odour, and um, the, the worms, um, once again, convert that very quickly, and we have um, taken that a step further and doing growth trials with it now. So you can see the worms here, so they've gone right through here, and you can see the fibrous roots right to the bottom of the spade level. It's important that we can supply our castings on demand, so the way that we have adapted is to feed on one side, the worms travel over to where the new food is and the water line is, and the other half of the row we strip lengthways. Um, stockpile, we get about um, 150 tonne and then get a screening plant in, but um, so after we've lifted um, the castings, we start feeding back to uh, where they've been and um, the next time we take it from the, res the opposite side. This row was fed a week ago and you can see already how they've converted this into uh, castings and that they're moving right into the row now. So worms, they, they eat from the outside in they're a bit like us um, with hot porridge, so they um, come in from both sides. Lime is um, the only product that we add. It's a, an, an extra cost, of course, but it, it comes back in the analysis results and the uh, calcium levels, which, which is very good. But um, it does sweeten up the Granny Smith apples and, and um, things like that, which have a pH level of 3.4, so um, it's just a bit sour for the worms. A small amount and often is better than piling them up because if the worms don't eat them quick enough, they can go anaerobic and leach down and kill the worms. Nobody likes to see leachate coming out the side because if you've got leachate, it means it's diluting the properties of the castings and uh, we want to manage it. So the castings, are, if you were to pick them up and squeeze them, you could hear a squelching noise but not dripping wet. When we return,